All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Of course, thanks for subscribing. Truly appreciate the support. We're back, finally, uh, getting rid of our other Hardware 3 Model S Plaid, getting a new Hardware 4 Model S Plaid, and now we're going to go a little bit of a downgrade, but also an upgrade in terms of numbers. We're going from 12.5.1.5 to 12.5.1.3 on Hardware 4. So we're going to take it out for a quick spin, uh, check it out, see what it has to offer on our regression test path, then we're going to do a more complex drive after that, uh, and see how it fares. Okay, so we're going to see for the extra smoothness. It just started raining. Hopefully it doesn't have any real bearing on it. But I'm going to get it up to our first turn. And then from there, I'm going to let it do its thing. Okay, a little quieter cabin, hopefully, here. Not that the other one wasn't quiet, but this is actually enhanced levels of quiet, which is great. Little refinements over time. Make this first turn just to correct the path. And it should adjust now. All right, here we go. I'll engage, or I won't engage. I'll actually pull over. Hold on for a second. It didn't enable my full self-driving here for this profile. There we go. Let's get it. Keep it on the average profile. Um, automatic speed offset, and we're good to go. Uh, and I will activate. I don't even have auto shift. So new, I don't even have all my things set up. Let me go here, yep. All right, here we go. So we'll start here. I can't quite engage just yet. Let's see if I can engage now. Not yet. Let me loop back around. Works of a new car. Not terrible, but let's see what happens. Started off right. Okay, now we got the activity here. We've got the icon. Let these cars pass. And then we should be able to engage, but I have to turn this way just to force it down our, our test path here. All right, let it re-engage. And now we activate. Turn one. Let's see what happens here. See if it's the same last time with version hardware three, we've got Uber Black's level of comfortable ride. Let's see what we get here. Little wide on the turn, little close on the turn, then it kind of adjusted and course corrected. I'll let that pass. It still did the turn, not totally uncomfortable, but just a noticeable difference between the last build and this build for that exact same turn. And that's kind of why we do this regression test path just to be able to see the minute differences between the two builds and how they handle certain situations. Coming up on turn two, see if it stays the course, doesn't get in the bike lane, makes a nice smooth turn here. Slows down nicely. Good mile an hour, 10 miles an hour. Car coming, good distance from the curb. Excellent job on turn two. Winding road, makes the left turn. Look at that. No turn signal. No turn signal finally on this turn. So hardware four has no turn signal for the degree in which the, the wheel turns on a curve or bend. That's excellent. Great job. Good distance. Excellent job on the winding road. Better than hardware three on that instance. Unprotected left coming up here. Let's see what it does. Stopping well before the limit line. Waits a little longer than hardware three. Cyclists just randomly roaming across. I have an opening with a police car coming. Good job committing. Nice and smooth, excellent. I like that. A little less aggressive and assertive than hardware three with the rebound and recoil from a stop, complete stop at the limit line, then actually resuming. Took a little bit longer, nothing uncomfortable, but just noticeable from the last drive. And had no bearing on confidence either. But so far, so good. I can't really, I can't really judge subjectively uh, the smoothness comparison right now, just because this is a newer car, a little bit of a tighter build, the seats are better. So it does feel like, oh, good job. 
Good job slowing down for this person. Good job. Predictive slowdown, anticipating what that person might do with the stroller coming off the unfinished road. But I can't really gauge smoothness levels right now just because I'm in a smoother, effectively a smoother car. 2022 or 2021 slash 2022 uh, Model S Plaid now to a 2024 Model S Plaid. Continuous improvements. So we've got a refined cabin, slightly refined cabin, more comfortable seats, quieter ride, quieter cabin. So that adds to the smoothness. So it's hard for me to really gauge one-to-one -one what the difference in smoothness would be. But it's still smooth. Nice smooth breakdown, as you see. The nice smooth slowdown to a complete stop. That was pretty good. Good job keeping the distance. Staying centered, kind of trying to figure out where it wants to go. It knows that this car, it should know that these cars on the right tend to turn right. This van is all over the place. Okay, now we got an interesting situation. This person is going to go straight for the merge here. Turn signal on, does a good job letting them in and not overreacting. person crossing their dog he's letting them go okay nice polite fsd we'll take it red light ahead so no big deal i can say that the the difference in acceleration and deceleration is also very noticeable in terms of smoothness um, and in terms of confidence Right, so hardware three, as you heard me talk about the last time with the assertiveness and aggressiveness, even on the average profile, accelerates a little faster, not as fast as previous versions of that, but it did accelerate faster than this particular hardware four version of the same build. And it slows down a little less smoother than this one. So this is a lot smoother or a little smoother braking and a lot smoother accelerating and decelerating. Accelerating out the gate. All right, coming up on our final turn, again, just to measure the minute differences from build to build is why we do this. It's a very easy course. It should pass it, no problem. Final turn here, slows down nicely. Good distance from the curb, good mile an hour. Excellent job on that final turn. So that's great. Here's extra credit. Just coming up to the end of our drive, see what it does. Is it going to pull over? Is it going to turn down the road? Let's see. Sees the person with the dog. A little bit of a hitch, too. This is extra credit. I'll still talk about that, but it doesn't have any bearing on the on the score, I don't think. Wants to turn into this parking lot, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're not doing that. But let me just pull over right over here. Okay. So that was pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that one just for the things that it did differently than Hardware 3 on the same build on 12.5. So we're comparing 12.5.1 Hardware 3 to 12.5.1.3 uh, on Hardware 4. So in terms of confidence, uh, it did pretty much everything with the utmost confidence. Uh, did everything in terms of acceleration and deceleration very, very well, very, very confidence inspiring, staying in the line, um, stopping for pedestrians, doing all the things with utmost confidence. The only way where it gets a little bit of a ding is the course correction on some of the turns. Some of the turns, it kind of turns in and adjusts as you saw on the final turn and as, as you saw on the uh, second turn. Um, those knock it down a little bit in terms of confidence, but just a, just a very little bit. Hardware 3 in comparison um, actually does that pretty well, but it also had some instances of course correction that I noticed as well. So similar in that, in that regard. In terms of comfort, overall, super comfortable drive. Didn't feel uneasy about anything um, in the drive. I just felt like it was a confident, comfortable drive. And it showed levels of comfort throughout, specifically with the acceleration, deceleration, and holding the turns on the winding road. No turn signal there. Super comfortable. Uh, and then also uh, just dealing with pedestrians, maybe extra comfortable as well. In terms of decision making, made all the right decisions. Didn't make a wrong decision. 
uh, made the adjustment, waited patiently for the biker who was kind of crossing the crosswalk, driving in the road, then decided to cross the crosswalk at the last minute for the unprotected left, got out there with confidence in front of the police car uh, at the right time, which was great, slowed down for the lady backing her stroller out uh, on the unfinished road, as well as stopping for the, the gentleman with the dog that wanted to cross the road, being extra polite. So right decisions, all the right decisions, no wrong decisions. Again, pretty much no traffic, so no real bearing on that. But in terms of what it did encounter, it made all the right decisions. And in terms of safety, I felt super safe. Didn't feel uh, uh, uneasy about anything except for the course correction. It made all the turns, specifically turn two and the final turn, made all the turns nice and smooth, but there was a little bit of a course correction as it angled for its turn. So that gives me a little bit less confidence, and that makes me feel a little bit uneasy about getting close to the rim, to the to the rims meaning that the first initial thought of the turn seemed like it was it was going to hit the curb and then it kind of course corrected to give it more distance that's what it says in my mind okay so overall i think it was a really really solid drive really good drive uh on par if not a little bit better just because of some of the things that it did better over the hardware 3 version and still get a, a four for uber black uber black levels of comfort here yet again so this is good to see the consistency there Obviously, Hardware 3's version came out after Hardware 4, but now that we have it, we're just comparing it in the reverse order, and that's what it is. Let me know your thoughts about this particular drive. Um, I'm going to go ahead and now take it to the next drive, and we're going to go from there. All right, guys, second trip. This is going to be more of a city highway drive or a city streets highway drive for the second go around. I'm going to try to engage from the, um, the curb. Let's see what happens. Good job. So this one actually can engage from the curb, which is great. Didn't do that the last build with Hardware 3. I did several drives there. Um, and it couldn't do it. Just couldn't just, you know, engage from the side of the road like that. Had to give it some accelerator. So this is great that it can do that. Again, just advantages. Running a larger model. Uh, model the Hardware 3 is running a smaller model. A little bit of uh, unwarranted braking. A little bit of accelerator push here. Tesla AI, Tesla team, if you're watching, would love to get my report button back so I can quickly report some issues that may come up without disengaging. Hook me up, please. Thank you. All right, full stop. And again, just not as quick to recoil, but it does commit and go, which is great. We're going to be going up past these speed bumps. And I took this route deliberately just to go past the speed bumps again, which kind of failed with hardware three. Um, just being able to, you know, see some but not the others and not slow down sufficiently for them. So let's see what happens with this one. Very steep hill here. Person coming on the right. An actual person. Pedestrian. These little medians. See course correcting here. For the median. Again, I don't mind it if it's the right thing to do. Again, just keeping an eye. Don't cut that close. I was much better than before, uh, than Hardware 3 for sure. But the course corrections just, you know, I would love for it to, to get it right the first time. See the current, the turn, map out the path and trajectory of the angle that it needs to be to be able to make it happen. Big bump. Okay, second median here. See if it does some uh, random phantom braking. Freaks out. Looking at that curb. Good distance. Good course correction here. For the leaves that were on the side of the road, that's great. Shadows are here as well. Nice and tight, nice and smooth. I like it. All right, here we go. A series of speed bumps here, starting with the first one, which is in the sun, well lit. Slows down nicely. Goes over nice and smooth, very good. Again, smoothness is gonna be subjective because it's just part of it being a new car. Slows down nicely for the second one. 10 mile an hour, that's kind of the speed you want to be at. Here's the one that gave it problems, covered in shadows, still giving it issues. 
did not slow down sufficiently for speed bump occluded by shadows. Let's see about this one. This one's right in the sun. So it slows down. So that's great to see that there's some consistency there between hardware three and hardware four. The one in the sun doesn't quite see the, the marking. Did not slow down sufficiently for unmarked speed bump. Okay, so good to see some consistency between hardware three and hardware four there. Just making sure that it's not just exclusive to hardware three. Nice aggressive getting out here for the turn. And then it goes for it. So the first speed bump was covered in shadows, really couldn't see it somehow. Second speed bump, the markings, the lines for the speed bumps were covered up with some pavement or some construction that they were doing. So it didn't recognize it as a speed bump and I had to take over. So it was getting too close. It would not have slowed down in time. And if it did, it would be very uncomfortable at the last minute. So that's not a, not a good look on this one for 12.5 just in general, hardware three or hardware four. Definitely need some, um, some uh, fixes there in terms of speed bumps, specifically speed bumps that are covered or occluded by shadows. Now, remember the last time we took this turn? It was a light. We it could be in either lane, the two turning lanes, the left one. He needs to get in one now, actually. Uh, and it needs to stay and commit before it got in the lane. And then it decided to change lanes over the, over the solid white line at the last minute. Not good. Let's see if this one makes the same mistake or stays the course. This one is not an option, so it kind of has to stay the course. But let's watch the yoke to see if it starts to think about doing something a little bit different here. Or if it just says, hey, I'm going to go in this lane. It's a turning lane, and I'm going to go. I'm just going to check to make sure I got the right route. Yeah, I think that's the one I wanted to go on. Cool. Here we go, green light. Stay in lane, stay in the line. Watch this for the lines as well. Nice wide turn. Way to hold it. Excellent job there. Excellent job. Stayed in the lane, nice and wide. Nice smooth slowdown for this person turning in. And then nice good rebound. Nice and smooth to rebound afterwards. So that was really, really good and impressive. Small things, small nuances that you wouldn't notice unless you're in the car. But I'll do my best to try to describe what I'm feeling in the moment. Turning onto the highway, a little tight there. I can forgive it because lots of people actually do that anyway, which is why the line has kind of disappeared. But could use some work there. Nice, good slowdown here for the yield. And then what I'm looking for here is precision right here and consistency in the yoke and how it's turning. All right, nice, smooth precision, holding that line, which is great. And then holding the next line coming up here, nice and smooth. And then I expect a speed up and a nice merge with a turn signal coming up right here. So let's see if we can make that happen. Nice good speed up here, turn signals on. Very good, very good. Person's trying to beat me to the punch. Car slowing down, letting them pass. Turn signal on, get over now. Excellent work. Excellent work. People see the plaid, they always want to try to race it and do all kinds of silly stuff. Great job controlling and not going too far down to the point where you couldn't turn or make the lane change. So that's excellent. Now we're on a highway stack. So I'll just do it manually in terms of controlling the speed here. Uh, it's a 65 right here, as you'll see right here. So I'm bumping up to 70. I'm not really uh, speeding egregiously, just uh, trying to anticipate what's gonna happen. And again, moving to the flow of traffic and getting to the point right now because it's highway and it's not auto offset that I'm going to get on the back of somebody and they'll help keep me to the flow of traffic properly to whatever that natural speed is. See that? So behind a truck right now, so that's natural for this lane. It'll probably change lanes in a second. Get into the next lane. There it is. Needs to be aggressive. 
car changed his mind, wanted to get over. Nice smooth turn. A little bit of a course correct, but that's okay. And here we go. So again, that's the flow of traffic. Speed limit is 65. I'm going 65. People are flying past us. This is the flow of traffic. Okay, so we want to kind of just stay with the flow of traffic, not try to go too slow, you know, not try to jam anybody up. Just go nice little flow of traffic, 70, 71 in this instance. I'm cool with that. And that's where you're going to feel comfortable as a passenger or as an active passenger, I should say, instead of a passive passenger sitting in the passenger seat. Uh, just feeling comfortable that it's going to the speed of traffic that's there. I'm going to speed up a little bit because I'm in the passing lane right now, just to 75. So I'm 10 miles an hour over. Again, cars are still gaining distance on us, going further away. That's kind of how they're driving. And this is highway stack. So if anyone's just getting FSD, this is your first go. Highway stack is a little bit different. And yes, I have an issue with the wheels. I know that. I see my yoke trembling right now at this speed. Uh, it's already set for service, but little bit of an issue straight from delivery but all good but anyone new to fsd um city streets is its own sort of program if you will highway is its own program as well and soon there will be one single program to rule them all uh, and it'll be much more competent than it already is on the highway highway is super good but just know that when you transition from highway to city streets or city streets to highway different a different program effectively engages i'm not going to get to the technical jargon but a different program engages and that's what's driving you around that's what has our auto offset and that's why we lose our auto offset on the highway and highway has some different logic that it uses to uh to navigate but so far so good very smooth very human-like um very confidence inspiring great decision making so far as well as uh great levels of comfort now obviously excluding the speed bump issue um, but we anticipated that we kind of knew that was coming or could be a possibility and it is a possibility and that's fine But so far this is looking really good. I Am feeling a difference over hardware three Again trying trying to just gauge my feelings on smoothness because that's going to be the car versus the other car a newer car versus an older car but just in terms of the poise that it shows when it does certain maneuvers versus the hardware three version where, which was still very good, still very solid, but I could tell there were some little nuances that were not, that are not the same between the two builds. If I got in the cars back to back, I definitely would, would notice that even more, but just the fact that I'm a few days removed, uh, only a few days from hardware three, 12.5.1.5, to this hardware four, 12.5.1.3. Tell you one thing I do miss uh, severely, and that is the um, the sensors, the proximity sensors, ultrasonic sensors, parking sensors, whatever you want to call them. Um, those are really good measures of distance and closeness to objects on the move and standing still. Even the redundancy of adding that on top of the camera, I think would have still been valuable. Just having nothing here and not giving me any real measurement of distance other than the heat map from the Tesla Vision is just not as confidence inspiring as having the ultrasonic sensors. And what was, what was great about Hardware 3, a little bit of an adjustment there for the, uh, the turn, a little wild turn, it's a little bit of a wild turn. Again, older code in here, so it's driving a little bit differently than it would in terms of smoothness and poise than on city streets. But I digress. Um, What's, what's great about Hardware 3 is just being able to have those ultrasonic sensors, again, just being able to see the, the, the numerical distance from objects, knowing that there's a little bit of an 8-inch buffer in there. This, you know, there is a buffer 
which is why when you pull into places, it says stop and you know, it, you're far away from it. I think that's the built-in buffer more than anything else. I'm not comfortable with that one. I'll just engage that one. I know that hardware, uh, excuse me, uh, the old highway stack did an aggressive turn for that particular turn. Gets a little too close to the uh, to the wall there, the, the, the guardrail. I don't like that. I've always disengaged with hardware three. There's no difference here. I think it's just the same code. So I'll let that ride. But what I'm saying is the ultrasonic sensors uh, provide that numerical distance so you can actually see. Tesla Vision just provides the heat map and is in varying levels of accuracy. Uh, more often than not, I've more often than not, I've started this car from the garage and obviously it takes it looks at things that are around it and I get in the car and it activates and then I open the door and it still sees the door as an object on the screen that needs to be, you know, dealt with. And then it always gives me the, the warning that um, parking estimations may be degraded or some, some message like that, which is, again, not confidence inspiring. So definitely would love to have ultrasonic sensors back or some drastic improvement to Tesla vision to make it more confidence inspiring. And to be able to catch me with distance on the move. So as I'm passing objects, I can see if the car is trending too close to something by the visual representation on the screen. I know people ask, why do you want to see, why does it matter if you see that on the screen? Because it helps me understand that if I'm driving in, in an autonomous manner or semi-autonomous manner, if the car is getting too close to things on the move, and if it is, I know I can anticipate to take over. So that's a little bit of a safety situation. to bump up just to get around this loud motorcycle it'll slow down once we get to this turn up here anyway all right i think it's gonna slow down there we go good job good control Precision. That's what I'm looking for. Holding the line. Being more like a robot and less like a human. So I think we have a short deadline. To, nah, we don't have a short deadline, sir. Not this guy. But so far, it's it's looking really good. It's really comfortable. This is, um, again, still uber black levels of comfort, in my opinion, so far. I'm going to excuse the speed bumps because I knew that what they were. That would knock it down a notch. So if you say high levels of Uber Black, this is maybe low levels of Uber Black now, just because of the speed bumps, the wide swinging turn. No one was around. I didn't feel uncomfortable about that, but I just knew that it was an old maneuver that the um, that the car did specifically on the highway, going to high speeds, trying to make those ex that but that particular exit <clears throat> it sways a little bit wide and gets a little too close to that curb. And again, I'm just very very aware of. Of course, this lane change. Uh, very aware of the debris that's there. So this is 55. I'm continuing the momentum from the 65 mile an hour zone, going to 72. People still passing me. I'll go one over deliberately, and I'll drop down a, set, a smidge. But for me, I just tend to go at a speed that would allow us to see what the true flow of traffic is so that I can be bumped up against someone and go their true speed or lane speed versus cars flying past me like they're doing right here and just trying to guess and go 70 and 75 
just a, a higher speed to bump up against the traffic and maintain that speed, whatever that speed is. <laughs> See that wide sort of aggressive lane change there? That's what it typically does on the old highway build. Strong slowdown here, extra caution. I'm okay with that. And we're gonna be resuming the city streets once we bl blend into this turn right here. We're back on city streets and here it is kicked in already. Auto offset is back on. Much smoother ride here because we're obviously going slower speeds. Again, looking for that precision, and it's there. Accuracy and precision is something that the machine should be able to give us that humans do not give us on a day-to-day -day basis and on a consistent basis, every single day, every single time. Good to go. Splits into two lanes. Should probably be in the left lane, but it'll stay here for now, make the left lane change later. Big bump here. Nice smooth slowdown. I think that's really the, the key indicator of hardware four versus hardware three. Much better slowdowns, acceleration and deceleration from a stop or deceleration from going, approaching a light or a stop sign or something like that, much better than Harbor 3, or notice will be better. I'm not going to say much better. Notice will be better. Nice acceleration, getting up to speed. It's on auto, going 38, 35. That's a good offset to have in this instance. Um, could even go 35 proper. Needs to get into the left lane soon. Signal on and get to the left lane soon. Let's see what happens. See how long it waits to do that. I would have already gotten over, but let's see what the machine does. Signal on now. Cars are coming, We're making it more complicated than it needs to be. Gets over. Person lets us get in. We need to get all the way over. Make this left. Nice, smooth. Very smooth on the slowdown. It's going to make it. Nice holding it without course correcting with that van there. Excellent job. Now it needs to get over to this lane, which is the right thing to do. Nice signaling and nice smooth lane change. Good slow down. Good rebound. Probably could have rebound a little faster, but that's just preferential. Nothing major there. close to that curb. Let's see what happens here. It's tight fit. I'm going to stop it if it doesn't look good. Nice precision. I like it. Okay. Okay. A little indecisive. Way to commit at the end. Not dissimilar. I'm going to disengage here. I'm not going to park right there. Um, not dissimilar to what a human would do. They see it, a way to go in or see a way for parking. So human-like in that instance. Um, I'm okay with that. Didn't bother anyone. Didn't hurt anyone. Probably could use some work. Our report button. Tesla hooked me up. All right. We are at our destination. Uh, I'll find my own parking. I don't want to play that game right now. But this was pretty good for the second drive. Um, second drive was pretty good here. I'm pulling right here if I can. I'm not going to use park assist. <laughs> I enjoy parking myself and becoming very proficient at it. If I have my hands full, some kids are in the car, it's a problem, I might use auto park, but yeah. 
don't use it too much. All right, so it's pretty good drive. Pretty good drive. First first uh, regression test path. Bode well. We got an Uwe Black, level four, number four, in terms of the overall drive and the feel of it. This one was also pretty good. Again, minus the speed bumps. I'm going to give it some leeway just because I knew the speed bumps were an issue. I anticipated them being an issue. And it got a couple of them right that I didn't think they would. But then it also got the one wrong that I did think it was going to get uh, in terms of being covered with the shadows. So not great uh, in that regard. And it did a good job not changing lanes like Hardware 3 did. Overall, I would say this is a, a, a still a four uh, in terms of uber black levels of comfort. Confidence was there. Confident, inspiring all around. Highway was known issue. So I'm going to I'm going to get again, give it leeway based on what I know it already does. So it's not something that's deviating. It's not regressing from a previous build. It's doing the exact same thing that the previous builds were doing uh, in that regard in terms of highway, because the highway application, if you will, has not changed. So it's pretty much the same. Right. So um, that's going to be just known issues. Uh, the, the, the exit, the swaying of the uh, lane changes and things like that, the aggressiveness of it there. But just in terms of city street aspect of it, very, very good, very phenomenal uh, in that regard. Again, so I would give it a low, low four. Uh, so it would be uber black still level, but just lower level just because of some of the mistakes that it did make are still mistakes. You know, we have we can't we can't forgive that that they're not mistakes, something that Tesla needs to address, fix, specifically speed bumps and things like that, definitely needs to address that. Much more confidence against curbs. Um, did a great job now, this drive, staying the course, committing to the path that it plans and not really hesitating too much and changing course mid, mid path, right? Obviously we had the median issue where we sort of saw the median and the course corrected. That's a perfectly natural thing to do because you're going up a hill, it's hard to see ahead of you in that regard. So. That wasn't terrible. That was pretty normal. That's what most humans would do in that situation. Okay. But it did show machine levels of precision all around uh, in terms of taking turns, taking bends. And that aspect of it is what's also noticeable over Hardware 3. Just the, the precision and accuracy of the turns that it does take, the proximity to things, not going over the white lines, not getting too close to the curbs, things like that. Okay. So overall, it was great. Safe drive. Decision making was great as well. So again, low fours. Uh, still uber black levels of comfort, but let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you thought about this drive. Let me know if you have it. What do you think? If you've been able to drive both, what do you think, right? Being able to go from hardware three and hardware four on 12.5 and with the differences that you noticed are, but overall, this is a, a, a big improvement in my opinion over hardware three. Not to say that hardware three can't get to this point. I don't know what I don't know, but I'm saying right now, as of right now, these two bills, 12.5.1.3 hardware four, 12.5.1.5 hardware three hardware four is the winner and i can see um how they can further refine hardware four to make it even smoother okay so let me know your thoughts in the comments until the next time enjoy your day enjoy your tesla